It's a pretty crazy time right now in America. In 2020, a lot of us became politically divided. We had a pandemic that ruined a lot of lives and jacked up the economy. Crime rates shot back up after going down for so many years. As a result, home sales are through the roof as people are moving in greater numbers than we've seen in a while. People want change. And where can you go? The best states, duh. Now, my definition of good is gonna be different than your definition of good, but I think we can all agree that states that are safe, that are growing economically, there's good schools and good jobs, are places that we wanna to move to, right? And all the states that we're gonna talk about meet these criteria, and many of them do well in all of the criteria we're gonna talk about. So everybody, let's get going. We're gonna talk about the best states in the USA where you can live, the 2021 version. So you're sitting there watching TV, your typical late night fair, pondering where you want to move to, and then you see an ad for Idaho. And you're like, I never thought I'd ever move to Idaho, but my city is totally run down with homelessness and crime. Maybe I should consider moving there. It would be a good pick. I mean, it was the fastest growing state in the nation last year for a reason. It added 2.3% to its population last year alone, and 16% in the last decade. Many people are from western states like Washington, Oregon, and California who are sick of the BS going on in their hoods. And immigrants are coming here in droves too. Believe it or not, Idaho's international population grew 6% in the last five years. And then everybody gets there and they're like, This is unreal! Well, that might be a bit of a stretch, but things are going pretty well here right now, especially when you consider the state's economy and safety. Economically, Idaho has had the best economy in the country for the last four years, according to many analysts. It's no longer small potatoes here, boy. In fact, Idaho led the nation with an 8% rise in non-farm employees. A lot of that has to do with the rise in technology jobs, as well as in healthcare. And international trade has been a big deal here, even despite President Trump's trade war. If you like safe communities, Idaho has you covered there too. It ranks fifth in public safety. Not too long ago, Boise ranked as the eighth safest city to live in the whole world. However, places like Pocatello and Weezer have a lot of room to improve, crime-wise. All of this means prices are going up, though. Idaho saw the nation's biggest bump in home prices at 14% last year alone, which is why people in Idaho despise people moving in from out of state, and they have the nerve to complain about an increase in traffic. Come on now, Idaho. You'll never know how bad traffic really is. If there's a knock on Idaho, it's the quality of its schools. And the boom in population has made overcrowding of Idaho's classrooms even worse. You might be thinking, Wisconsin? I thought Milwaukee was a big hood. Well, Milwaukee is straight ghetto in many areas. But overall, Wisconsin has a lot going on. Just ask all the people moving in from Illinois and Indiana. Many are moving to places like Madison and its suburbs. Wisconsin's quality of health care and the quality of its schools are both ranked 14th in the country. Not amazing, but not too shabby either. The quality of life score in Wisconsin is 10th, according to the USA Today, which you may or may not find as a reputable source. That score takes into account household incomes, murder rates, unemployment rate, voter turnout, quality of water, and pollution. Jobs are improving here, not by a lot, but manufacturing has seen a big boost, and Wisconsin ranks second nationally in terms of education and health services jobs added last year. Many say raising a family in the upper Midwest is the best place to raise a family. Plus, Wisconsin people have awesome hair like this and this, at least some of the old school moms do. But nobody said fashion was an indication on how great a place to live is, right? If you wanna have a simple dinner that's full of corn, Nebraska, Nebraska. In a similar vein, we have another Midwest state, Nebraska, which is a great place to raise a family. Sure, it can be kind of boring, but the kids will probably behave and stay out of trouble. As long as they stay away from North Omaha, which has a ton of crime and rundown areas and gangs. But most of Omaha is a great place to be. They call it the Silicon Prairie because of the technology growth here. There's so many unfilled jobs here that the state's actively convincing people to move from places like Chicago and Detroit and Denver and even as far away as San Francisco to enjoy great jobs and a really super low cost of living. MarketWatch called Omaha the new number one tech hotspot, everyone. 
Lincoln is also booming technology-wise and is also a great place to live too. Nebraska is the kind of place where you can earn a good living and be safe and where people still believe in sitting around the breakfast table. It's the kind of place where you can actually get involved in your community and make a difference. Or just get a cheap place way out in sticks. Lots of people are getting as far away from the chaos and high taxes that come with many parts of our country and Nebraska would sure be trading up. The cost of living here is super low. The average cost of a home is only $180,000, making it the 12th cheapest state in that regard. I would say only Kentucky and Iowa are great places to live that are cheaper than Nebraska. The rest of the states with lower home prices than those are struggling, so. Taxes here aren't terrible, but they could be better. Property taxes are the 10th highest, so that sucks, but income taxes are about average here in Nebraska. But do they have Mr. T over there? Our country needs more tough, no-nonsense, always looking out for justice guys like Mr. T. I would actually vote for Mr. T for president. Mr. T and Wonder Woman. Nobody would mess with us then. You see, when you play games with people's feelings, it will always backfire. Take it from me, Mr. T. That's right, Mr. T. That's right. Can we get him on the ballot? Somebody, please? Now, say what you want about Massachusetts, but it remains a great place to live. I know people in the Northeast say they hate mass holes, but maybe they're just jelly. The state ranks in the top 10 in three categories. It's the 10th safest in terms of overall crime, including the nation's lowest property crime rate. The state has the nation's lowest firearm death rate, too. Massachusetts has the top ranked healthcare system overall, including access to healthcare and quality of healthcare overall. And the state has the best ranked schools in the country, along with the most educated population in the US. Way to go up there, guys. Of course, with quality of everything comes a housing shortage. Due to a lack of inventory here, home prices shot up by an astounding 33% last year, which is just crazy. Affordable condos here are harder to find, and inventory for single family homes has dropped for 92 months in a row. So, yes, the state is great in many regards, but it's quickly becoming too expensive for its own good. Now you might be thinking, I'm a little biased because I live in North Carolina, but people tell me all the time, I hate the West Coast, I hate the Northeast, I hate the Midwest. I wanna live somewhere safer and warmer where there's lots of good jobs and lots of space and beauty, and I can't recommend North Carolina enough. Jobs-wise, it's taken off like a rocket ship. Charlotte's exploding and gentrifying, and there's always been great banking jobs there. The triangle cities of Chapel Hill, Durham, and Raleigh are all the rage when it comes to technology and healthcare jobs. 36% of graduates in this area have a background in STEM. That means science, technology, education, and math, dummy. Durham has been called the startup capital of the South, and Raleigh saw a 40% increase in tech jobs over the last decade. There's huge areas in the middle of the state that are exploding, and they can't knock the pine trees down fast enough to meet demand. It's still relatively affordable, and property taxes are the ninth lowest in the country. You could pick anywhere along the coast or in the mountains too, and enjoy really pretty scenery and really low crime. However, North Carolina has some big pockets that are struggling, particularly on the northern edge of the state and in the giant eastern region, areas that were once manufacturing and agriculture hubs that have fallen into decay. Now we've all heard about the Rust Belt in the Midwest. This is the Rot Belt. There are many more like it in the South too. That's okay. You can move to many places here that aren't dying or aren't boring. There's a lot of places here to choose from. Let's look at Florida, that most southern projection of the USA, which has been variously known as the Peninsula State, the Sunshine State, and even the Mermaid State. Mermaid State? For the uninitiated, the mere mention of the word Florida calls up a kaleidoscopic mental picture of flamingos and alligators, boating, bathing beauties, and bottles of suntan oil. Florida's a controversial state. Many Americans say they dislike Florida, but they must be lying since it's the second most visited state in the country, and the population here has grown by 15% in the last decade, and it's home to nearly a million snowbirds, or people who flee from their cold climbs for a few months a year. Florida also has 15% of the country's second homeowners. 1.1 million people own a second home in Florida. Can you believe that? If you've ever taken I-95 North after Easter, you know what I'm talking about. You might even see license plates from the North Pole. But in terms of overall desirability, it's hard to beat the Sunshine State because, well, it's sunny. Well, winters are perfect, but summers are unbearable, so there's that. But there's no income tax here and property taxes aren't too bad either. And there's plenty to do for fun. 
And you may not know it, but Florida's education system is ranked as the third best in the country. Wow. Florida had the nation's second best economy last year too, helped in part by a governor who allowed businesses to remain open during a pandemic. But Florida has one of the country's highest wealth gaps. There's a lot of money and success and opportunity here, but a big part of the population is struggling. Home prices are about average nationally, though in highly desirable urban areas along the coast, that's not the case. Those are really expensive. But look at this. Because of the threat of rising sea levels, you could probably get a good deal on a coastal home right now. Get on the phone. Looks like people are afraid of hurricanes and global warming. I don't know why. Is it getting hotter in here? And of course, we know Florida's a really super dangerous state, so that's not good. I love Florida. I just asked the criminals to stop acting like jerks and they always listen to me. I don't ask the bad guys to stop. I make them stop. <laughs> Mappy, why do you think you're so hard? I am hard. No, you're not, Mappy. I'm hard. Did you know I'm hard? <laughs> no, I didn't know you're hard. Do you even know what hard means? It means tough. Okay, we've spent too much time in Florida. We have to move on. Hey. Whatever. Hard. Mappy thinks he's hard now. Virginia ranks pretty high in most of the categories for things people care about. Its healthcare isn't too shabby. Its schools are in the top 10. The economy ranks as eighth best, and it's actually the ninth safest state you can live in. Add it all up and it's not too bad a place to live in. Plus, like North Carolina, you have really pretty mountains and a coast. Virginia's home prices are stabilizing, which could be good or bad, depending on how you look at it. I mean, it's good because homes anywhere outside of the DC metro area are actually pretty decently priced. But that's also where most of the jobs and traffic and snobs are too. But despite having a strong job market, Virginia has a problem with its income gap. A lot of the millennials who like the idea of having a lot to do and working for a great company can't afford to live in Northern Virginia because of the high housing costs and the high taxes. So while on paper, Virginia looks good in so many metrics, you have to pick an affordable place to start your roots there. This is the state of Utah, the Rainbow Land. Rainbow Land? Utah is located in the heart of the Intermountain West and is bounded on the north by Idaho. Okay, we already know where Utah is. You know who is the fastest growing state? Utah. It's 17% bigger than it was in 2010. Utah's hot. That's because of people like me who say Utah is the next big thing. The population's exploding. Part of that's because the Mormons have like 20 kids each. No, that's mean. But they're coming from all over the West and even from places like Illinois and Connecticut. Nobody came to Utah from Delaware or Maine last year. Not one single person. Utah has a great economy right now and it's the youngest state too. Both of those are setting the state up for success down the road. Younger folks are showing up here and they see the pretty mountains and the new home communities and all the great healthcare and the highly rated school systems and all the space and the safety. And they're like, <laughs> jobs wise, you may not know it, but Utah led the nation in terms of job growth creation last year. And it's unemployment rates, the fifth lowest in the country at the time of this writing. Property taxes are pretty high, but income taxes are fairly low here. However, get in now, fella. Utah's medium home values flew past the $300,000 mark last year, led by Salt Lake City's highly educated workforce and thriving tech sector. Now I know in another video I ranked Colorado as the best state to live in, but that was based less on data and more on personal opinion. The numbers suggest that Colorado is a superb place to live and raise a family. It's in the top 10 for healthcare and education, and jobs-wise, it's all technology. Denver, Boulder, Greeley, and Fort Collins all rank in the top 10 for hottest technology job markets, according to the Wall Street Journal, which is a reputable source for news. I highly recommend it. Other things that Colorado is good at besides being really pretty are quality healthcare, great schools, and the healthiest population in the country. The sun's out all the time here, and healthy, stoned people who get a lot of sunshine are usually in a good mood, according to a friend. Colorado is no different than the other Western states that have seen an influx in residents, especially people in California who every day say their happy goodbyes once and for all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. 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 Bye-bye. However, with all the growth comes home price gains and traffic and pissed off locals and criminals. Colorado's crime has gone up. And the homeless problem in Denver is quickly catching up to the other cities out west. They gotta fix that. New Hampshire is a land of history, of contentment and charm. Here are quaint covered bridges. Here are cities and towns older than our nation itself. Man, this guy has a great voice, doesn't he? 
New Hampshire, home to only 1.3 million people. It's a great place to be, especially right now. You don't ever hear of any riots or ghetto BS up there. Most people up there won't stand for that stuff. This is actually the safest state in the country where there were only 21 murders last year. There were 21 murders in Chicago since you started watching this video. There just aren't any really big urban poor areas here in which crime can fester. It's pretty rural. The big headache here are opioid deaths. Only West Virginia and Maryland have a higher rate of deaths from overdoses, so that part sucks. But overall, New Hampshire is a fairly wealthy state per person. And since there aren't a lot of poor people to take care of, they can spend more money on things like healthcare and capital improvements and schools and policing. New Hampshire does have the highest property taxes in the country, but there's basically zero income tax, so it kind of evens out. Now, some people will say Vermont should be on this list, but Vermont, up until the pandemic, saw people scurrying from inner cities, and they had been losing people at an alarming rate, especially the younger people, primarily because of a lack of jobs and because of high taxes. So I can't recommend a place that many people are fleeing from every week. Okay, so that's it. The best states in America. If you live in one of these states, great. You're lucky. If you happen to live in a bad state, in places like West Virginia or Louisiana or Mississippi or New Mexico, well, hopefully these will give you good ideas on where you can move to, right? And if you live in a place that's all chaotic and crowded and expensive, these are also some good ideas for you to ponder, right? And if you aren't gonna move, well, maybe you should just get out and go see these states. I'm sure you haven't taken a road trip in a while, right? Just saying. We still have places that are great We still have places you can stay There's still hope for the USA These might be our top greatest states Idaho is not all rednecks, Wisconsin is safe and pretty, Nebraska is not all farmers, Massachusetts is so smart, and Carolina has the beaches, Florida is popular, and Virginia has so much to do, and Utah is waiting for you, Colorado has the sunshine, New Hampshire will make you smile. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.